Hello and welcome. We are Team Brand South Africa, final year MBA students at the University of Pretoria's Gordon Institute of Business Science. Please join us as we take you through a strategic analysis of various countries around the world, recommending three countries in which Hematite Capital can invest a portion of their $30 billion portfolio in distressed mining assets. Our understanding of a distressed asset is the kind of asset that is put on sale at a cheaper price. Some of the reasons that could lead to that is unstable economic climate, regulatory constraints, or the owner experiencing bankruptcy. Using the Zurich Risk Room, we were able to identify the most attractive investment opportunities based on their potential risk-adjusted returns. Using the information in the Zurich Risk Room, we built a heat map where we rated each individual country risk on a scale of one to five. Five being most risky, one being least risky. We also used the Zurich Room data to build an average risk rating for each country using the political risks and the business risks to create a rating. We looked at the real GDP growth information in the Zurich Risk Room as well as the information for the USA, which we used as our benchmark because it is the country of domicile for hematite. Adding those together, we created a real risk-adjusted return ratio or percentage return that we use to determine which countries were the most attractive investments. What we did as a final step with the Zurich Risk Room data is we looked at each individual risk factor and we zoomed in on the factors that had the highest issue rates or were the most prevalent in each of the countries of focus. We took the top nine risk factors and we modeled those with the assumption that we could mitigate risk by 50%, then what would be the impact on the total risk for each of those countries? The following assumptions and approach was followed to get to recommendations. That the company has 30 billion US dollars of asset under management. And we assume that 5% of the portfolio is invested in high risk distressed mining asset that worked out to 1.5 billion US dollars with a holding period of five years. We chose Africa because Africa has shown a greater economic growth as compared to other regions and going forward it will still be higher. Most of distressed assets will be in Africa due to unstable political environment, regulatory constraints and excessive debt within many of African countries. Based on the assumption and the methodology, we therefore make the following recommendations. We propose a model where we allocate the capital amongst various countries. We are using a PEST analysis to place the country's risk ratings in context. The three countries are closely positioned along the political and social continuum, sharing similarities such as extended consecutive terms served by heads of state. Notable is that the IMF has recently reclassified Rwanda from a fragile to a resilient state. All three countries are making steady gains in the reduction of poverty and increases in primary school enrollment rates. All three countries are vulnerable to commodity price fluctuations and have therefore experienced fiscal pressure the last two years. Ghana is strategically located in the west of Africa with a port. Rwanda and Zambia, although landlocked, are positioned along the northern and central corridors, which creates linkage opportunities within the region. This accelerates sorely needed investment in infrastructure. We then applied the Gemawat AAA Triangle as a tool for conceptualizing our mitigation strategies. Under adaptation to mitigate redundancy cost, we will include redundancy cost and SED spend as part of the deal structure. We will cut overtime and redeploy labor to SED initiatives to retain workers. To mitigate corruption, internal controls and surveillance, as well as improved technology, will result in better transparency. To mitigate political violence, Understanding our limitations in this regard, our immediate strategy is limited to obtaining insurance cover. Under aggregation, to mitigate the China slowdown, we will rather focus on Africa growth through infrastructure investment to promote regional integration. We will leverage free trade agreements such as COMISA. And under arbitrage, to mitigate government burden, we will partner with intermediaries and include political party funding as part of the deal structure. To mitigate state failure, we will include infrastructure spend for public services delivery as part of the deal structure. There are significant opportunities attracting investment in Africa. The first being a large young population. The continent has a young population with a growing labor force, a highly valuable asset in an aging world. 
In 2034, Africa is expected to have the world's largest working age population of 1.1 billion. The second being a destination with a high potential for return on investment. The resilience of large parts of Africa in the face of challenging conditions reflects continuing diversification in many of the continent's economies. The third being infrastructure improvement and being best placed for benefit from the fourth industrial revolution. African economies are also well positioned to benefit from rapidly accelerating technological change that can unlock growth and leapfrog the limitations and costs of physical infrastructure in important areas of economic life. The fourth being human capital improvement. Africa is still urbanizing and much of the economic benefit lies ahead. Africa is attracting good foreign investment. So, yes, they may be higher risk in Africa, but the potential for high returns are amplified by these amazing opportunities.